All right, in this video I'm going to do a couple more linear equations. And in this case they'll be a little more complicated just because we have to do some distributing, uh, just a few more steps to get us there. Okay, so anytime I have a linear equation I have to solve. And if there are any parentheses involved, um, so notice we have parentheses in both of these, the very first thing I do is try to get rid of the parentheses. So in this case we're going to have to distribute the 3 to the m and the 3 to the negative 4. So 3 times m is simply 3m. 3 times negative 4 is negative 12. The plus 5 will just drop down. I'm not doing anything with that. And then positive 6 also drops right down. And now I'm going to combine some like terms because I have a negative 12 and a positive 5. Negative 12 and positive 5 is negative 7 equals 6 still. And again, I'm trying to get, I want to do some steps so that I get eventually just m all by itself. That's what I'm trying to get down to. So the negative 7, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bring that to the other side, and I can do that by adding 7 to both sides. And then we're left with 3m equals 13. And now at this point, I have a single term on the left involving m. I have a single term on the right that's just a constant. Whatever number is in front of m, since we're multiplying by 3, again, we want to undo that. So I'm going to divide both sides by 3. 3 divided by 3 is just 1, so that goes away. And now 13 divided by 3, that doesn't really reduce. Um, they're both prime numbers. And even if only one of them uh, were prime. Even even at that, they uh, they have to have some common factors, and certainly they don't in this case. So our final answer in this case would simply be m equals 13 over 3. And you could check that if you plug 13 over 3 onto the left side, if you subtract 4, multiply that by 3, and then add 5 to it, you'll get the number 6 out. And I think this illustrates, again, you know, kind of why it's important to have this procedure because I certainly just couldn't, you know, this is not a very uh, complicated linear equation, but I certainly wouldn't guess 13 over 3, you know, at a glance, you know. Um, so, so again, procedure, procedure, procedure. Um, all right, so part B here, we've got 3 minus uh, 7 times the quantity x plus 3 equals negative 4. Now, the same thing we're going to have to distribute, but be a little careful here. Um, to me, the thing in front of the parentheses is negative 7, so that's what I'm going to distribute to the x and to the positive 3 to get rid of the parentheses. So the 3 just drops down, and then I think negative 7 times x would be negative 7x. Negative 7 times positive 3 would be negative 21. Our negative 4 is just hanging out. Okay, so now I'm going to combine my like terms. It looks like to me we have a positive 3 minus 21. So positive 3 minus 21, that would leave us with negative 18 minus 7x equals negative 4. And again, I'm trying to get down to where eventually I just have x all by itself. So since we have a negative 18, to get rid of that term, I'm simply going to add 18 to both sides. So again, I think what undoes subtraction, addition. So I've got negative 7x equals, okay, so negative uh, 4 plus 18 is going to be positive 14. And now, since we're, we've got just a single term on the left, a single term on the right, to get rid of the negative 7, I'm simply going to divide both sides by negative 7. And in this case, you know, we have a positive divided by a negative, which is a negative. 14 over 7 leaves us with 2. So it says our final answer in this case is going to be x equals negative 2. And again, you could always check that if you plug negative 2 back inside of here, that when you do the, all the arithmetic on the left-hand side, we do in fact get negative 4 as our solution.